What's up YouTube? Coach Andy here with this week's video on running dynamics and data and this is for Garmin devices. So first I want to start off by saying I've been really pleased with the progress that we've made week after week um, even though we've just started starting small. So I, what I, I really want to encourage you to do is to share this video to get some more exposure and hopefully grow the channel but we're doing great so far. So the first question is, what are running dynamics? The running dynamics are all of the pieces of data and statistics that you get at the end of your workout onto your watch or any other kind of device that you use, but it's gonna analyze a lot of different factors that go into your running. Well, for this video, I'm not just gonna explain what they are, but also explain how you can apply them to your training because that's where it's really valuable. Not only are looking at your dynamics cool and interesting, but they're actually there to help you, especially if, to, if you use them correctly. When you're looking at your running dynamics, I would encourage you to look at your statistics after you're done with your run rather than during your run, unless you're doing a workout where you're specifically shooting for a target. And then the last part of this video, I'm gonna show you a statistic that I created called running efficiency. It's pretty simple, but I think it's really valuable, especially if you use it to its potential. Okay, I'm gonna show you what you need in order to get this kind of data for your run. So, um, this is my watch. It's Garmin Phoenix 5S. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's one of the best watches you can get, but um, pretty much all of the Garmin devices are capable of tracking your dynamics. Now, not only do you need a watch, but if you want to get accurate data, you're going to need one of these. And this is a chest strap heart rate monitor. And not only is it going to measure your heart rate, but you're also going to get a lot of other statistics with it. So I found that just the wrist heart rate monitor on the watch is not very accurate, which is why I initially got this. But then I discovered all the other features that it has, and so I would highly recommend the investment in getting one of these. The first couple of things I'm going to show you aren't necessarily dynamics, but they are some good, interesting things that your watch is going to track. So first, we're going to look at VO2 max. Where you find your VO2 max is, you're just going to scroll down one you're on your training status, enter and there it is so right now i'm at uh, 66 and what your vo2 max is is a measure of your basically how fit you are um so vo2 max is at your maximum uh effort level your maximum heart rate how many liter milliliters of oxygen can you intake and use um, i'm at 66 milliliters right now thing is, this isn't necessarily perfectly accurate, but I still like to have it because um, it's it gives you a good general idea of of where you're where you are at. Uh, so then, with that, you also have your uh, race predictors. So these are just your um, predictions for times based on your VO2 max. Um, again, not completely accurate. It's also going to be different if you're a slow twitch versus fast twitch runner. All right, then the other measure of fitness is um, your lactate threshold. So the lactate threshold right now, I'm uh, 605 per mile um, with a heart rate of 184 beats per minute. So your lactate threshold is what effort level are you creating lactic acid? So if you want an aerobic run, you can't get over this level. That doesn't mean I can't go faster than 605 pace without getting lactate threshold. That's just an estimate based on my heart rate at 184. Now, with your VO2 max and lactate threshold, if you want um, accurate data, you need to get lab tested, which can be done if you have those resources available to you. Um, and then this is just your training load, your last seven days, kind of uh, how hard you've been working. 
and then uh, recovery advisor. So this is how recommending how long you should um, you should take until you do your next workout. Again, this is somewhat accurate, kind of nice to have, but not perfectly accurate. I kind of find I'm better off kind of just judging this on my own. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to access your look at your running uh, dynamics. So uh, this is just my run today. So you click on that. And it's going to load up here and then that page icon and then these are all your your basic things so pace speed time those are pretty self-explanatory i'm not going to really go over those um, and then we have heart rate your training effect these are your dynamics this is mostly what i'm talking about your elevation change calories temperature and power which i'm gonna talk about later so this app is available on the uh, app store uh, just the Garmin Connect app and it just syncs with your watch and then shows you all the data So my favorite thing about this is the charts. So this shows all your 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 different statistics just on graphs. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about heart rate heart rate is your best uh, Measure of overall effort and that's gonna be measured in beats per minute and it's really going to depend on who you are and obviously how hard you're working on your run. One of the cool things about the heart rate is that there's a chart that tells you what zone you're in. So the, there's five different zones. The lowest is easy, which really isn't kind of any training benefit. There's low aerobic, um, which is your easier aerobic functioning. There's high aerobic. Um, just to step up from that, you're still operating aerobic. Then there's threshold, which is kind of right around where you're starting to get that lactic acid build up. And then there's maximum, which is over your threshold rating. Then the other thing with heart rate is calories. I, not many people know this, but the uh, number of calories you burn is based on your heart rate. And if you want to get an accurate measure of how many calories you're burning on a run, then you got to have a heart rate monitor. Okay, then the next statistic I'm going to talk about is your elevation change. Um, this one I find pretty helpful, but it's not totally accurate. Uh, just for reference, sometimes I'll start and finish a run in the same place, but, but my elevation will be um, either more gained or lost, even though I'm starting and finishing in the same place, which doesn't make much sense. but you're still going to get somewhat decent um, elevation. And then for anyone who knows me and my training, um, I'm really into hills, so I look at this a lot. And then also, if you're in ultra training, you want to train based on what your ultra race uh, elevation grade is. So that's how you're going to use elevation in your runs. Okay, now we're going to actually look at some of the dynamics. So first, cadence. This is a really important one that a lot of people in running know, and it's been important for a long time. So cadence is just the number of steps that you take per minute. And generally the kind of the, the rule is that 180 is the ideal number, but this is just kind of depend on who you are, um, which is going to be based on how tall you are and how fit you are, there's a lot of different factors going in. So your ideal cadence might not necessarily be at 180. The other thing to consider is that at faster speeds, your cadence is probably gonna be higher, and at slower speeds, your cadence is probably gonna be lower. Now, some people don't actually change their cadence at all, um, no matter what pace that they're running at. Um, but generally, if you're running faster, your cadence is going to be higher. So um, the next thing is GTC, which is ground contact time. So this is measured in milliseconds, the um, time that you each foot spends on the ground per stride. <clears throat> and then there's vertical oscillation. So vertical oscillation is how high you're coming off the ground. Now the important distinction is here that it's not how fa how high your feet or your knees come off the ground, but how high your upper body comes off the ground. So, and this is measured in centimeters. So the lower your vertical oscillation is, 
the more efficient your stride is. Because if you're going, if your vertical vertical oscillation is really high, then those are centimeters that you are going up rather than forward. So if your vertical oscillation is really low, all that's going forward. And you know, usually it's it's really just a matter of one or two centimeters. But the thing is, when you're taking a couple thousand steps during over the course of a race, that really adds up and that makes a huge difference. So um, thing another thing to consider with vertical oscillation is that um, typically at faster speeds you're gonna have a higher vertical oscillation because your stride is gonna be longer. Now, something to know is that your ground contact time and vertical oscillation are inversely related to your cadence. So, like I was saying, your cadence is a good measure of how efficient you are. So if your cadence is high, your ground contact time is gonna be low and your vertical oscillation is gonna be low which are also important in your efficiency. So these are all directly related and um, you can see that by looking at the charts. If we go on to the Garmin Connect app, and we're gonna go to our charts and then we'll go to cadence. So this is our cadence chart. Now, we're gonna overlay with, uh, let's do ground contact time. And you see the top, top set of dots are your cadence and the bottom is your vertical or is your ground contact time. So if we zoom in here and we look at all these specific dots, on the higher this dot is on the top, the lower this dot is on the bottom. So the way that you wanna apply this to your training is by figuring out where you're gonna be most efficient. Um, and this is just going to be with a lot of trial and error, but um, you got to figure out what cadence is going to work for you and then along with that what these are going to look like. And that's going to be a different number for everybody, but you got to practice it, you got to figure it out, you got to look at your data and um, be the most efficient runner you can be. As I said a bit earlier, um, your vertical oscillation is going to be higher when you travel at faster speeds and this is a good measure of efficiency. So. Um, to give you an even better sense of efficiency, you can look at the vertical ratio. Now, the vertical ratio is your vertical oscillation as a percentage of your stride length. So if your stride length is one meter and your vertical oscillation is 10 centimeters, then your vertical ratio is gonna be 10%. Now, the lower that percentage is, the more efficient that you are. Overall, I would use vertical ratio as a better measure of efficiency than vertical oscillation because it takes into consideration how long your stride length is. The next thing I'm gonna show you is running power. Now the thing is with running power, it's not gonna be on your watch by default, but you can easily get this feature on your watch. And also you need your chest strap in order to get power data. So. You're going to go on to your Garmin Connect app. You're going to go to More. Scroll down to Connect IQ Store. And it's going to load up. Um, so these are all the apps available that you can download onto your Garmin. There's all kinds of stuff in here. So if you haven't seen this, I would highly encourage you to check it out. Um, so right now, I it's set for what's available on the Phoenix 5S. So it's going to be different for depending on what watch you have. But... In the search, you're just gonna look up power. All right, go down a bit, and then it's this green one right here called running power. All right, and then you just download that, and the next time you sync your watch, it'll be available on your watch. Power is a great statistic because it's gonna give you a good measurement of the energy output that you're giving. What's cool about power is that it's gonna take into consideration some other factors. Namely, is elevation change. So, if you're going uphill, your power is gonna be higher. So, even though your speed might be lower, you're actually working harder to get up the hill. Even though you are going slower, it doesn't mean 
you're not working as hard, which is why running power is a great statistic. Okay, so this last part, I'm gonna explain the statistic I created called, uh, what I'm calling running efficiency. Basically all it is, is your power measured in watts divided by your heart rate measured in beats per minute. So the reason that this is better than using pace is because it's gonna take into consideration your effort going up and down hills. These are my runs from the past seven days. So this is the day, 400 watts divided by uh, 174 beats per minute gives me an efficiency rating of 2.3. Now, what I can do is look at this compared to these other, um, these other runs and get a good idea of how well I'm performing. So a good way to use this is maybe if you compare your data, you can figure out which pace or which cadence you're gonna be most efficient at. So um, this one is my highest efficiency rating. My heart rate was only 146. Um, so it was a pretty easy run, uh, but I ended up with this for my efficiency rating. Um, so most of my, one of the things I looked at is that my cadence on this run was 175. On this run, my cadence was 170. And as a result, you can see I'm a lot more efficient here than I am here. Now, there's also some other factors. Um, conditions outside were better here than they were here. Use this and analyze where you are, what you could be doing. Um, this is a really simple statistic, really easy to do, but it's also really helpful, especially if you apply it in the right way. This, as far as I'm concerned, is the best um, measure of efficiency that you can have. And um, the reason for that is because it's really simple and easy to use. And it doesn't need to be complex because this is all you need. Your, your output of effort, your internal effort. That's the only things that you need to take into consideration when you're looking at your efficiency. So this is how you do it. Use this, be a more efficient runner, be a better runner. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions about this video or any of the statistics, just leave a comment and I'll definitely uh, respond. And like I said earlier, please share this video. This is some really good content. Um, I looked up, there's really not many other things like this that you're gonna find on the internet right now. So please share this. Uh, we have a really good opportunity to kind of expand and grow uh, the Gowan Running Project. So um, yeah, share the video on your social media platforms like it, leave a comment, subscribe, do what you got to do, uh, do your part to help grow the Gallon Running Project. Peace.